Roethlisberger. Yeah. And now, KTSM 9 Sports with Kelly Horsen. Sponsored by Lachine Vias and Enderman Injury Lawyers. The men's title game, perhaps, is one of the most anticipated games with UConn and Purdue being two of the top programs in the country for the past few years. El Paso native and Bob Cousy winner Tristan Newton will be representing the Huskies in the second title game in back-to-back -back seasons. Newton and head coach Dan Hurley sat down for a press conference earlier today with a lot to say about the matchup with both teams, respectively number one seeds. We're a pretty physical team, but you know we more so would fly to the ball. Um, you know, and then I think we, you know we're disciplined like they are. I mean, they're they're an excellent rebounding team. We're an excellent rebounding team. We both block out. You know, a lot of the time it just comes down to uh, uh, you know tracing that ball and and uh, you know who, who's uh, who's going to make that life or death pursuit to get it. Yeah, we've been the uh, two best for games you know, the past two years. Uh, us and Purdue and. Um, it's a great match. I was looking forward to it. You know, the coaches are going to, you know, get us well prepared and, and ready to, to have a good game tomorrow. Champs will try to go for the repeat while the Boilermakers are fighting for their first title for the first time since 69. Tip off is set for 720 Mountain Time tomorrow evening from State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. And the women's championship game was another notable matchup, breaking records, peaking at 17 million views, the most for a college event ever streamed on ESPN+. Most tuned in to watch the face of women's basketball, Caitlin Clark, try to help Iowa win their first ever NCAA tournament title in program history, while South Carolina was looking to close out the 2024 season undefeated. To Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse we go, home of this year's NCAA Women's Championship game. Iowa's Caitlin Clark starting off hot. Clark had 18 points in the first quarter and 30 on the day. Iowa up 29 to 20 after one. Second quarter, South Carolina down three. Tessa Johnson nails the three. South Carolina ties the game at 34. Last seconds of the first half, Raven Johnson with the steal on Clark. The score headed into the locker room at halftime. Gamecocks up 49 to 46. Third quarter, Iowa down six now. Clark connecting with Hannah Stolke, Iowa chipping away at South Carolina's lead. Fourth quarter, Gamecocks up six with less than three to go. Camila Cordosa with the rebound and second chance score to keep South Carolina in control. South Carolina closes the year with a perfect season, 38-0 record after the 87-75 win. The Gamecocks win their third national championship in the last seven years. And looking to get back on track on the road, UTEP softball was looking to come back to the Sun City with a win under their belt against Florida International University. After dropping the first two games of the series, the Miners were looking to prevent the clean sweep during Game 3 Sunday morning in Miami. Top of the first, Italy's Mendez at bat sends one to the right field Panthers, scrambling to the ball as Mendez gets the double, bringing in Autumn Scott to get the Miners up early. Bottom of the fifth, two to one UTEP. The pitch is wide and gets past the catcher. FIU takes advantage. Miners can't get back to the plate in time to grab the out, and it's all tied up at twos. The competition goes into extra innings into the eighth. Amaya Lee sends it over to left field, hammering it right over the fence, bringing in Brie Garcia, bringing them up by two, solidifying the win five to three. And New Mexico State baseball also came to play this morning, playing with a chip on their shoulder, trying to prevent the clean sweep as well. It was a competition where the Aggies trailed and came back multiple times. NMSU pulls out the 8-6 win for their second conference win of the year, going 2-1 on the weekend against the Flames. The Chihuahuas entered one of their last games of their first homestand of the year against Express. Headed into today, El Paso had the slight edge in the series with the 3-2 record. Chihuahuas opened up strong on defense, holding off Express during the first two innings. Bottom of the second, shortstop Mason McCoy puts up El Paso on the board with an RBI single. Same inning, Clay Duncan reaches for it, sends it down the line, and it's a fair ball. It's a two-run double, and the second baseman now leads the league with the most RBIs at 17. Into the top of the fifth, Cal Mitchell seems to have a good position under the ball, but the play results in an error and two runs for Express, giving them the first lead of the game. El Paso would trail for the duration of the competition, resulting in a split series 3-3 three and three after this 9-6 loss. And finally, just announced earlier today, the El Paso Rhinos will host the first round of league playoffs at Rhinos Arena in the best of three series on April 12th and 13th. 
14th if a tiebreaker is necessary. This is the first time the Rhinos have punched their ticket to the postseason since joining the new league in 2020. Both games are slated to begin at 7 p.m. That does it for your sports this evening. We'll be right back after the break with a last look at your weather for this upcoming week. 